Ice Dragon Lightning is a very special type of damage modifier in Elden Ring. It's in fact one of the rarest of its kind, knowing that there are only about three of them in the whole game. The Ice Dragon Lightning appears also blue instead of yellow or red, like the other lightning variants in the game. But what makes Ice Lightning so special is its inherent properties of lightning damage paired with frostbite buildup. However, since it's so rare and obtained from later game bosses, I thought it would be an interesting challenge to do. Without further ado, the rules for the run is as follows. No summons, as this is going to be a solo run. No glitches or skips. No game-breaking cheese, like sleep pots for a gutskin duo, because that's gay. With an additional rule to only enhance weapons once per boss. We don't want the run to be too easy after all. Now, with all that done, let's find out together. Can you beat Elden Ring with just Ice Dragon Lightning? Let's find out. Starting off, I decided to go for the Samurai class as it starts with just the right stats to enable the first phase of the run. So after traversing with the early game and getting Torrent, we can finally begin with the run itself. Now to actually start the run, we had to go and get our first weapon, one of the only three Ice Dragon Lightning variants deck we could get in the game. And to get it, we had to go beat a boss that's quite fairly hidden in a later game area, the Dragonkin Soldier. And I haven't practiced against this thing. God damn it, dude. <laughs> um I I haven't told you guys this, but um despite already beating the game before, I've pretty much left Elden Ring for about a whole year. So, um you could say that this run is pretty much a scratch of fresh meat again for me. As I've Pretty much forgotten everything about the game. Uh, yeah, I thought I would tell you guys that now before it's too late. Um, anywho, um, back to the video. Man, that sucks. I fucked up my stamina. That is entirely my fault. Bro, what? Bro, what the fuck? Dude, what the fuck was that? Like seriously? I just died from nothing. Three hours later. No fucking way, no dude. Fucking no way. fucking no way, way, dude. Fucking oh my god. Oh my god. One HP. <laughs> I think just by looking at the clips before, you can pretty much assume that this boss is simply not meant to be fought this early into the game. And you will be right, as this boss pretty much one-shots you from full HP, with or without armor. So by not wearing anything, 
I managed to be able to utilize the light load for a better iframes on my dodges. Hence why I'm not wearing anything on this one. So you guys might be wondering, how exactly do we beat this thing this early into the game? And well, there's a strategy and this requires some setup. To do the setup, you need to actually deal as much damage to him before a second phase by going to his hind legs like you see on the screen right now. But once he goes to second phase, you cannot do this anymore. So everything after is pretty much by experience. Now, from beating the Dragonkin Soldier, I calculated that we would get barely enough runes to actually wield the Halberd itself. And yes, it was precisely just enough. Now, let's talk about this Halberd. This is the Dragon Halberd. It's a strength, dexterity, Halberd type weapon made famous by its unique Ash of War, a special variant of the Spinning Slash Ash of War. Now, what makes it different? is the fact that this Ash of War imbues the Halberd with Ice Dragon Lightning, which naturally adds to its total damage output, as it gives bonus lightning damage and frostbite buildup for 45 seconds. That sounds all good and all, but this weapon is also the fourth shortest Halberd in the game, thus giving us near to no reach at all to work with. But no use nitpicking at this point though, so um, with the weapon in hand, we go straight to Margit. Now, Margit isn't really an issue, as the Dragon Halberd's damage is honestly quite high for this stage of the game, and to be perfectly honest, I'm quite satisfied by the damage output that I was dealing. So this really made the fight last a lot shorter than what I would expect from Margit, from my other runs, prior to this one. Now, Margit has a very clear opening, and that's gonna be when he's gonna be doing the upper left swing. And what you can do there is to stand on the left side of his back, and the attack will miss completely, enabling you to fit in a really charged heavy, or a full-on Ash of War, which in our case would be the Spinning Slash. As for the second phase, the only thing that you need to figure out is just being patient and to not be greedy when it comes to how much attacks you can fit in a single opening. Most of the time he would just repeat just slightly longer patterns of his attacks from the first phase and most of the time you can just fit right around one skill in between. In my opinion this will be pretty much enough to beat the boss altogether and this shouldn't take too long. That wasn't enough. Right, so after Margit has fallen, we can finally do some upgrades into our weapon, go to Stormvale, and well, for this one, I decided to take a set of grays on the right first because we needed an insurance policy in case something fucks up 
and so I don't have to go back around. Well, after that one's done, we can go straight to Godric, which should be the second boss of the whole run. And this boss is, to be perfectly honest, the easiest boss in the whole game. So there's not really much to talk about here except for, well, pretty much what we can fish for is the attack that he will do when he would start to move his axe around like a tornado. And what will happen is he will start to roll around and what you can do is just walk or dodge behind him and you can do a full Ash of War and this should do a lot of damage. As for the second phase, when he's doing the fire attack, you can just walk up to him and do some really good chunks of damage. And from this point on, all you need to do is to pretty much repeat phase one and he should fall very quickly. Because after he's done with his fire attack of the same attack that you did on the first phase, you can pretty much do the exact same thing to him afterwards and this fight i think took me about two tries the first one being because i was well stupid so um yeah die godric die Die, Godric. Easy, yeah. <laughs> Bathed in rays of gold. Just die, dude. Just die. Shut the fuck up. Just die, bro. Fuck. Now, after Godric has fallen, we can finally do some really good prep for the run going forwards. And the first one being to activate Godric's rune, which honestly didn't really end up being super useful because we don't really use it as we don't really get a lot of rune arcs so yeah that part is a bit iffy but after that we decided to get something that's going to be quite useful for the run and that's going to be the spear talisman now the spear talisman is very useful because it gives you bonus damage when you're doing pierce attacks which the halberd conveniently does so after we pretty much got all the prep done, we can continue to run by going behind a dragon's back. This will enable us to pick up an item that will give us access to Raya Lucaria Academy, since we need to fight Renala to progress with the game. So after we gain access to Raya Lucaria Academy, we can first fight the Red Wolf of Radagon, which honestly took very quickly because um, he's very soft. But not long later is the Renala fight. I'll let you guys watch this part. Yeah, bro. It's so... quiet. Hey! 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 My feet! Don't touch my feet! You gotta pay for those at Feed Finder. Oh my god, bro! They all want feet! Now, onto Renala. Now, this fight, at least for the first phase, is honestly quite simple. All you need to do is to kill these girls with light bulbs up their ass. And once you're done with that, you will actually just deal damage to Renala herself once she falls down from the bigger light bulb. Now, for this one, all you need to do is just to deal as much damage by using the Ash of War first so you can get at least the buff going. And I think for after about two or three hits, she will get applied by the Frostbite. And this will really make work quick. As the Frostbite buildup, or the Frostbin status, actually adds damage that, that she takes from your all sources of your damage, I guess. Um, and because of that, she goes down very quickly. And after about two rotations, she is down and we can start phase two. Now, for phase 2. You see, on this second phase, I lost a lot of times here because I was actually trying so hard to be defensive. I was trying to kite her around, I was trying to do some chip damage once in a while if she gets into range. But at the same time, the summons and her projectiles are all like chasing me down. And it was really annoying because they hurt a lot, as I'm not exactly wearing anything. 
and because of that, what I was doing was wrong. What I was doing was trying to kite her around and playing super defensive. And because of that, she I never really got the chance to hit her at all. So I did the only sensible thing and to completely go ball sack and just went full on aggressive, brain dead mode. And for some reason, it works. Watch this. Fucking do this. There we go. So, after Renala's over, we can now get some levels from the runes that we got and head straight to, well, Ronnie. And before that, we have to get through the Karia Manor first. And this one means that we have to get rid of Loretta, which honestly didn't take too long. Um, as you can see, most of her attacks are relatively slow, so it didn't really take that much. Plus, just for this one case, we actually managed to get kind of lucky. Because this area has a lot of water, and lightning damage has some really good synergy if you have water close by. Well, once that's over, we can finally go to Rani and actually start her quest line, which will be very important for later. And I also think that we need to get some better talismans because I think up to this point we haven't really been wearing anything except for the Crimson Amber and also, well, the Spear Talisman. So this was a good opportunity to start looking for them. So... I'm sorry. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Please forgive me! I'm sorry! Let's go. Alright. Now the next thing to do is to fight Radon, and in order to do that, we need to get both the medallion pieces to actually enable Altus Plateau, which then will open up the Radon Festival, enabling us to fight Radon. So after we finish on getting the medallion, we can actually go to do one last thing before we continue and progress a lot more quickly towards the run, and that's to get the Minor Earth Trees tier. To be more specific, the lightning tier. And we need to kill this guy right here. Recording. Okay, perfect. After we're done with that, now we can activate the elevator to actually start our fight with Radon. And that's exactly what we did. Now, let's talk about the Radon fight. So, this boss is probably one of those moments that got me extremely frustrated and sad and got me crying like a little bitch about it. And, um,. Yeah, so what happened was, this fight took so long because I got pretty much either one-shotted or almost one-shotted by almost anything, and I don't really know how exactly I can fit a big attack in. So this uh, this fight actually took hours. I think it's, it took about three hours just this fight alone because I don't know what to do. I'm just not seeing a clear picture of what I'm supposed to do to fight this thing. But I'll tell you what, after, I don't know, dying maybe 50 times, I started to learn something. 
So, when you first fight, you want to actually go backwards. In fact, you want to go as far away as possible from him to reset his AI's targeting. And this will actually make it a lot easier for you to fight, because then when you go back, and when you spawn him again, well, he won't be attacking you. As you can see, with the arrows. So, now you have this melee forced fight, instead of starting off with so much arrows and shit thrown out at you. And what happened is, you can just do this exactly what I did, and this would deal just enough posture damage that two more attacks will trigger the frostbite. Then this is important, because the moment the frostbite buildup procs, he will start doing the gravity pull into the gravity push, or the gravity slam, and once you dodge those two, you can actually fit some really good hits in. His posture is either gonna break if you hit him fast enough, or he's gonna be in such a low health that you just need to wait for his attack, which is gonna be this one that he did, which is the jump lunging attack. This one you can punish. When you drop his HP to about 40%, he will transform into a meteor, which signifies his second phase. And on his second phase, all you need to do is to get some good opportunities to actually jump from your horse and hit him. Or, in my opinion, you can actually fish for his, well, those meteor summons. And you can actually hit him while he's summoning those meteors around him. This would often already hurt him pretty bad so that you can actually either break his posture or just repeat the process once or twice. And that's it. That's Rudan. Okay, so after Rudan has been defeated, we can finally do Ronnie's questline. Well, at least the next portion of it. So let's take a B roll on that one and uh, let's do that real quick, shall we? Right, so now we have to kill the Baleful Shadows, which will be guarding the Lake of Rot. Another very important place for the run, because we will actually be getting our next weapon there. But first, we need to kill this guy. Or a slow weapon with a high damage. Usually, you would pair that with a lot of poise. Now, what is poise? Poise is a stat that makes you less likely to get staggered when you attack so it takes people more more attacks to stagger you or to stop your attacks also i can i can definitely punish that because he's in in the water my lightning deals more damage Ah, there you go. Okay, so I can frostbite him. It's just hard. There you go. There you go. Before them, this is farewell, my dear. Tell Bly and E.G. I love them. Damn, bro, that's deep. <laughs> that's fucking deep, bro. 
<laughs> it gets me every time. That Ronnie voice, I mean, she says, tell Blight and EG I love them. Holy shit, dude. This is, this is the, this is the thing that a lot of other developers are trying on their Souls-like games, or Souls go, or Soulsborne games. They're trying to make the story something that people can empathize on, something that people can care about. And it's difficult. Because often what we care about is very is something that's subtle, something that's that has a lot of impact, a lot of a lot of grit into it, and and often you don't you don't need to scream or anything. Like a good story will be able to carry itself, and I think it's something a lot of developers need to start thinking about. That you don't need to make the character scream or whine or whatever. It tends to become annoying instead of well being entertaining. Anywho, so after all that's done, now we need to fight this thing right here. Uh, let's just say this fight isn't my favorite, and I did die here a lot more than I'm, well, willing to admit. As you can see, I've, I, I'm literally dying before I even get to the boss, so uh, when you need to kill it as well, now that's, uh, that's something. Anyway, um, yeah, watch this shit. Clean, I need to clear this up as fast as possible, because if I don't, then I'll just die. And I fucked up. Please tell me I got him. Please tell me I got him. Yes! I got him! I got him! I got him! Is he dead? Yes! I got it! Yes! Yes! Well, now that that's over, let's talk about this weapon, which will be, well, the next weapon that we're gonna be using for this run. And it's gonna be the Dragon Scale Blade. So, this weapon is primarily a Dex type, Katana type weapon, with the basic Katana moveset. But, to make it special, they added a little bit of Ice Dragon Lightning on top of it. Just so it's kind of special, you know. Well, the point is, there's only two things I could probably say. The first one being that this weapon has a lot of damage when you have the buff on. But, it's honestly one of the shortest katanas in the whole game. So, it's reach is, to put it, nicely is kind of shit anywho well not long after all that ordeal we can finally well go to Landell. and on this one there'll be a couple things that we need to do but first we need to kill its gatekeeper the draconic tree sentinel
there really isn't much to do left on this part of the map, so we can just access Lanedell and go towards the Walmart Godfrey. Um, to be perfectly honest, this fight is kind of boring because uh, he's a bit weak. So let's just skip this part and go on. At this point of the game, I'm starting to feel like our damage is really starting to fall off. So in order to offset that, we ended up getting the Golden Vow, Ash of War, from this guy. Now, after we're done with all that shit, we can finally start progressing the story again. And for this one, we will actually go towards Astel to actually finish Ronnie's questline. It's over! Die! Rogar! Die, Rogar! <laughs> Fucking Rogar! Die! Welcome to Deep Einzel. Ah! Welcome to Moonlight Outer! <laughs> oh shit! My Indian accent's on point today, boys! It's on point! Oh, guys, we got married. That's so cute. So, now that the Ronnie's quest line has been finished and we've unlocked the ending that we want, there's only one thing to do, and that's to continue with the main storyline. And that's gonna bring us where we are now, which is the Morgoth fight. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I think that this fight is pretty damn hard, but I did learn a couple things. And that's gonna be that this is actually just a really improved version of Margit in which most of the attack patterns are relatively the same. However, there are some things that this one does differently and that's gonna be the spears. Now, there's a lot of openings that you can do from, well, his attack patterns. One of them is actually to punish him after the holy hammer. And afterwards, the rest of the openings will probably be on the, either the hammer again or on the spear. To be more precise, the one that he does when he's going to stab the spear with the running motion. You can actually fit a lot of hits into that. However, most of the fight goes pretty much what you expect from Margit, and I think that there's not much else to say about this one. Hey Margot! Do you like it? Uh -huh. Do you like it? Do you like my ass? Do you like it? Yay! That that you um you had you 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 could you Anywho, after defeating Morgoth, we can finally enter the snow area of the game. And in this one, we actually don't have that much to do except to fight the fire giant. And that's exactly what we are doing next. So let's go all the way there and let's talk about how the story goes. Plus three Estes. I guess you could say at least although although um, we're at plus three, we do have like a bunch of, we have a lot of them. We got, we got eight charges of our Estes, so that's not too bad I would say. 
not too bad at all. Okay, it's the fire giant time. This is actually one of those bosses that gave me a lot of problems even during my first playthrough. So I remember this one being a bit of a nuisance. And I think the biggest issue is that he's very tanky and he's got a lot of damage with a lot of AoE nonsense. So you have to get around that if you want to beat him. Unfortunately for us, this boss is... He moves a lot. And because he moves a lot, it gets pretty hard to hit him. But I think I, I got quite lucky on this one because it didn't... It honestly didn't take too long. But it, it did kept me in this boss room for about... I don't know, about two and a half hours, I would say. Bro, oh my god, dude. Bro, come on, man, what the fuck is that? Oh my god. I honestly don't think that the fire giant is hard. I just, I, I just feel like I'm getting greedy. You know, I'm getting greedy and sloppy, and that's why I keep on dying. All right. Okay. I've had enough. Two and a half hours stuck on this one boss. Alright, boys. It's over. It's time. It's time we awaken our hentai booby powers. And finish this once and for all. Let's do it. What's your plan for Godskin Duo? Wanna use a sleep pot? No man, sleep pots are lame. We ain't gonna do that shit. We're gonna do this the old fashioned way. We're gonna beat the fuck out of him. I don't like using sleep pots and stuff. It's too lame, dude. It's like, it's like deep down you've given up on trying to get better and you just want the easy way out. To me, that's lame. So, I'm not gonna do that. Ah, Melina! Your Melina, your hands on fire! Don't burn yourself! Ah! For guiding me here. No problem, bro. <laughs> ah, no! Get away! I don't want to touch those! Your skin is so fucked! I don't want to touch that! <laughs> dude, I love Gino's content, dude. That guy made a lot of the fights look so easy. Holy shit. That guy's like the goat. I'm, I'm his number one fan. The dedication is crazy, Breton. Hey, what the... Well, guys, from this point onwards is pretty much the late game, and the bosses from here on out are gonna reflect that, as they are extremely difficult, especially the one that we're fighting right now. For those that don't know, these are the Godskin Duo, and they are notorious for being a terribly designed fight, because what happens is there's two of them against you and they both attack you at the same time, sometimes. Mostly, yes. And so you need to take care of your ass while two of them are hitting you at the same time. And also at the same time, you have to deal damage to them. And so for this one, I did some strategies. 
that I thought might be kind of useful. And what I did was I actually ended up um, focusing on the fat one first because the fat one seems to be a lot easier to dodge because I got used to his attack patterns a lot more quickly. And I think after I beat the fat one and I managed to get the white, the, the thin one alone, he's actually not that hard. And especially the time that he uses to summon the second, uh, the second part of the fat one. So what happens is guys, once you killed one, the, th the other one that's alive will try to revive the other one that died. And it's, they're doing nothing while they're reviving the, the other one. And I use this opportunity to actually deal as much damage as possible, just to barely enough to kill um, the guy. And this happened twice, that resulted in basically this. For those that didn't know, that Godskin dual fight took nearly 4 hours. So I got a little bit overexcited when I was when I managed to beat it. <laughs> anyway, we gotta continue with the run and we're on our way to fight the next boss, Malekith. And if you think Godskin Duo was hard, this boss took me 8 hours. You can check it on my stream. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm gonna fuck you, birdie. I'm gonna fuck you. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we're finally here at Malekith. And just to let you guys know, this boss is probably the hardest one that I fought so far on the run. This boss fight alone took a little bit over 8 hours to complete by itself. And I'm pretty sure a piece of me died there. But I know that that's not what you guys come here to see. You guys want to see me beat this thing. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. But for the brethren out there who had suffered on this boss the same way I did, kudos to you guys. Because this boss... Oh my god.
Wow, man, like that was definitely something. Um, it was definitely an experience that I relived again from, well, back when Elden Ring was just released. But we can't on gloating like over a past victory. We got a lot more stuff to do before we end the game. And so the first thing I did was I ended up going to get the Crimson Amber Medallion plus two because I think we needed some HP. And I think not long later, we ended up going to fight Gideon, the all spamming. Well, for this fight, we just did whatever we did to Ranala to him. And that kind of settles it. Take a look. I mean, at this point, I'll try, I'll try anything. What the fuck, dude? Anywho, after Gideon's done, all that's standing between us and beating the game are literally just two more bosses. Well, three, if you count the Radagon and Elden Beast as separate bosses. And I think this video has been going for a while now. I think we should wrap things up. Alright. Next one's gonna be Godfrey, and to be perfectly honest, this boss is very fun. It took me about an hour and a half to finally beat this boss, but in those one and a half hours, I actually had a lot of fun. You see, this boss might seem kind of overbearing for most people, because they might not understand how his moveset works, but to be perfectly honest, the way he moves is just slow enough that we can just react to whatever he's doing and dodge appropriately. So this doesn't make it feel like he's tricking you or anything. There's like almost no trickery in his kind of moveset. And pretty much what you want to do is you want to either jump and attack him while he's doing the earth spike attack. Or you just want to dodge around until he does the big swing with his axe and then punish that. Now, for the second phase. Now, the second phase is honestly quite different, but you can actually have a pretty good start if you dodge the way I did there when the battle starts, and this will give you some really good hits in. And I think on this form, he's got a lot more defense. However, he's also not at full HP, so if you can get through as much damage as you can, this battle shouldn't go too long. And another opening is when he does his, his huge lunge attack. You can dodge backwards and then do a jump attack, and that should help you well. As for this attack, just run away from it the moment it starts. But you need to react much more quickly, because if you get late, you not be, you're not going to be able to dodge that attack. As for the second opening would be this kind of like grab, single hand grab attack. You can just circle that through and hit. And I think one of the things that I really think is a useful tip is to just allow yourself to get hit by the roar. Because the roar deals no damage to you and it kind of pushes you out. And sometimes it will actually save you because it will protect you from damage when he does the lunge attack while you're, well, on the ground. Like what you see here. Because I was down, so I get to escape. If I didn't get down there, if I didn't eat the roar, I probably would have taken a lot of damage there. So this is honestly one of the couple things that I learned from a lot of the attempts that I was doing. By the way, thank you. I was watching Ongbal from YouTube when I was um, fighting him. So this was definitely something I learned from Ongbal as well. So drop him a follow if you haven't. He's probably the probably the best PvE um, player that I know. <laughs> Anywho, enjoy the rest of the video.
Now, there's just one fight left for us to fight before we can end the game. And that's gonna be the Radagon and the Elden Beast. So, after you enter the Radagon fight, there is actually a very small window in which you could actually just go straight to him and do some couple hits in. And on this case, I would just honestly do a lot of light attack so I can build the Frostbite buildup. And honestly, this is actually this is quite useful because when you Frostbite him, he takes more damage, so the fight goes less long. And honestly, a lot of the more annoying parts of him is how much delays he puts between attacks and the amount of damage he's able to pump. However, this fight honestly didn't get too hard because I think his attacks are a little bit easier for you to grow on and understand, so it's easy to react to it once you get used to it. Plus, a lot of the wind-ups gave you a lot of time to recover your stamina and all that, so this fight wasn't too hard. Because by the time he starts attacking you, you probably already got a frostbite up and he's pretty damn hurt. So this fight honestly didn't take too long. As for the Elden Beast... Honestly, no comment. <laughs> Just take a look. How did that miss? Point blank range! No, 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 no. No. Bro, just die! Come on! Oh my god! Allah Akbar, bro! Just fucking die! Where are you? DIE! Why does DIE?! Oh. Don't look at me! I'm an armor. I'm an armor user. Don't don't look at me. I get that the game's pretty much over and we've pretty much beaten the game. But people from chat just kept on telling me to fight Melania, so well this is what I did. And to be perfectly honest, Melania is the most is the most fun fight in the entire game. I would happily go on and fight this boss for hours and it doesn't really matter because I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a really good time fighting this boss because I think that her kid is very fair. It's very, it's very hard and it's very difficult to fight her, especially like the melee range point blank waterfowl dance. However, the kid of the boss itself is very balanced out and I think that this is a very fun fight because you feel like you're fighting an equal, which is pretty nice if you think about it and also this boss doesn't have weird gimmicks so it's actually quite nice that you get to enjoy these fights a lot more i think back then when i used to play this game 24 7 every single day i would literally almost kill her and then i would leave and so i can keep on fighting her over and over again and i think that's one of the appeal of well fighting melania and this is what i love about her the most and I want to share this, at least this run's fight, with you guys. Enjoy. 
run and jump attack. Bam! It's probably stupid, but... And with that, the challenge is over. I, I understand that the weapon that I'm using isn't exactly weak. I also know that this isn't the most difficult run. I try my best to actually slightly increase the difficulty of well the challenge run itself by not using the incantation Ice Frozen Dragon Lightning Spear because that spell is kind of broken. But I do still think that majority of the difficulty that I face in this challenge is simply for myself. I do think that I have a lot of room to grow and a lot more improvements that I can actually adjust. However, if there are any more tips or any more build ideas or challenge run ideas that you guys want me to start doing in the future for future content, please do let me know in the comment section down below. It took me a lot of time to edit this on my own after all, and I'm just hoping that you guys would enjoy what I made here for you. Thanks for watching. Please like the video so it gets recommended to more people. And that's it for me. This is your Uncle Big Fish. And I'll see you guys again on the next one. Have a nice day.